Welcome back to Lucor Automotive Services. This morning, I'm working, working on a Jeep Cherokee. So this Jeep came into us because the clutch pedal was on the floor and he had called around and everybody told him he needed a clutch. Well, pretty common problem on these old Jeeps with a stick shift is the clutch pedal assembly brakes. And uh, they're not really easy to find. They're about a $200 part if you can find one. So we called the customer, told him we'd like to try to weld his clutch pedal back together. He said, sure, go for it. Everybody else told me I needed a clutch, so I'm happy to hear that it's just a pedal. So I pulled it apart, welded the clutch pedal up, put it back together, seems to be working fine. So I drove the car down the road, realized it's got a fuel leak. It's got a really bad wheel bearing, as you can hear. And the front U-joints are non-existent in this Jeep. There are no needles left. Um, so we're going to put U joints in the front of this. I actually already did the one. It was a little rough. It blew the end caps out, so we had to torch it out. But we came through. That one's done. This one's not. We're going to go through a little quick U joint replacement because I figured somebody out there might be replacing their U joints and say, how the heck do I do this? So I figured I would show you how I do it. The way I do it may not be the right way, but it's always worked for me. I've been pretty successful at it. So I'll show you some of the tips and tricks <laughs> that I do to remove these. This end cap's actually broken on the inside. This thing has been worn out for so long and driven with no needles in it for so long that it's actually started to break the end caps off. So let me get a couple tools together. First, we're gonna knock the retaining rings out and then we'll drive the end caps off, replace the U-joint, put the new U-joint in, put it back together. On this style Jeep front end, the stub shaft, this is the stub shaft, and this is your axle shaft. The stub shaft is bolted into your hub. Leave your hub bolted together. So leave your axle nut in your wheel bearing, remove your three bolts from your wheel bearing, drive your wheel bearing out of the hub, and then remove your axle nut to remove your axle from your hub. It will uh, help prevent destroying the wheel bearing, trying to get it out of the knuckle because sometimes those wheel bearings are stuck into the knuckles pretty good. Leaving them bolted together helps keep them from, it helps keep you from knocking the bearing into two pieces. So let's get to work. I like to use my OTC ball joint press. There's several manufacturers out there. I've had this one for probably 20 years. It works great. It does the job. It does what I need it to do. That snap rings almost all gone anyway. We'll knock him out. Remember to wear your eye protection when you're knocking these clips off because they do go flying. That one's across the room somewhere. So I got one clip off. Make sure I'm lined up in my hole. second retaining clip off. So now as long as I'm lined up in my my press, which it looks like I'm pretty close, I should be able to get this one out. I tap 
on the ears of these to get them to help break loose because sometimes the ears of these yokes will pinch in and it binds and it creates a problem and when you smack tap it with a hammer it helps the, the vibration helps that release that pressure I just blew the end cap out, so I failed on that one. That stinks. Oh well, on to the next one. So we'll show you how to resolve that problem. That one hit the roof, but it's out, so that's good. So this one's going to be fighting me the entire way, and that's the world we live in, so it finally popped loose. As you can see the gap where the snap ring used to be, but it blew my end cap off again. This one actually had some needle bearings in it still. Um, but that's alright. Doing U-joints sometimes is a pretty medieval process, and uh, you just have to get after it. The biggest thing we want to try not to do is we want to make sure we don't pinch these yokes because if we pinch the yoke we'll have to replace that shaft because it'll create a bind or a noise or abnormal wear in the u-joint cause all sorts of weird stuff to happen anyway well let's see what we can get out of this we got all our snap rings off got that last one to do we'll pop him off there Maybe. <laughs> that guy's off. Let's see if we can drive this guy through. My ball joint press keeps getting off center. So we're going to do it the old fashioned way, which is to beat it out with a hammer, which is what most people do anyway. Sometimes the ball joint press works really slick, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on the shaft you're working on. This one doesn't have square sides. Uh, some joints will have a nice square angle, a nice square flat surface on these outers of the yokes. And that ball joint press works really well because you can square it up and it just drives them right through, drives them right out. cooking. All right, now that you joins out. All right. So now 
we got that mess out of there. We put our new U-joint in. New U-joint, new clips. So we're gonna take off two end caps. Put our. Well, we're gonna try to put our joint in there. It fits, I swear it does. I'm not holding my tongue the right way. Snug. So we get our first end cap in. I always put my joint into it to help keep the needles in place. And then we would go with the old medieval hammer. That's it. Try not to hit your thumb. But you drive it in. And I actually drive it past flush. And you'll see why here in a second. So I drive it almost all the way through. And what this does, first of all, it makes it real easy for me to put on my snap ring and make sure it's going to sit in the position I want it to because I don't want it to catch this shoulder. But now I put my other end cap onto the joint. Everything's nice and aligned. I use my ball joint press or a hammer. goes well. Looks like my snap ring will fit. It's close but not quite. So I'm going to use a punch to kind of work this ear off and that snap ring should fall right into place. Just like that. Another one for good measurement. Make sure my snap ring is engaged correctly all the way around, and it is. Snug but not tight. I'm pretty happy with that. So now we'll put the long shaft on. Same method. So I installed my, my first cup. I ran it through, farther through than it needed to go. Put on my snap ring. Hopefully without it going zinging across the room. Make sure it's centered so it won't hit the shoulder. Looks good. Put my other end cap on. You can see I have a nice protrusion of the joint. The joint slides in, it's nice and straight. All I have to do is drive it back, install my C-clip. One new joint, installed, locked, and ready to go back into the car. So there you go. One new wheel U-joint, installed, locked, feels pretty good. No more noise, no more funny feelings out of the front end. 
should work good for another 130,000 miles or so. Um, if you think this is something you're willing to tackle at home, go for it. Total respect for anybody who's willing to work on their own stuff, but but having the right tools to do this job makes this job a lot easier to do. Just saying. This is just one of the little things that we do here at Lucor Automotive Services. I thought I would share a little bit. Um, hope you like the content we're putting out. If you do, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. We're doing all sorts of weird stuff. Sometimes it's normal generic repairs like this. Sometimes it's really neat, cool old stuff that we're doing whatever we're doing to it too. So subscribe, give us a like, leave us a comment. Have a great day. We appreciate you watching.